discuss about membrano proliferative glomerular nephritis in this video we will refer to it as mpgn so let's uh, see what is mpgn mpgn is a not a single entity of glomerulopathy it is a pattern of uh, glomerulopathy now uh, the base of this glomerulopathy is immune mediated injury okay now to discuss the mpgn we have to understand that the mpgn is further divided into two types this is type 1 and type 2 now this type 2 is also known as dense deposit disease okay the uh, difference uh, why there is type 1 and type 2 is because type 1 and type 2 have totally different pathogenesis okay the pathogenesis is different however if we see on the light microscopy the appearance of type 1 and type 2 is similar so uh, they are collectively studied under mpgn but however the pathogenesis is different now also to remember is the type 2 uh, system uh, the disease comes under complement mediated glomerulopathies okay so uh, here the pathogenesis will involve more of the complement system also the mpgn is also divided into primary and secondary forms the primary means there is uh, unknown etiology behind it that means it is idiopathic so type 1 is idiopathic one uh, the not type 1 sorry the primary one is the idiopathic one however the secondary we have certain uh, other diseases which can lead to mpgn like morphology okay so going to the pathogenesis firstly we'll discuss the pathogenesis the morphology afterwards okay so in the pathogenesis uh, you should uh, first is the type 1 okay so type 1 as i told you the pathogenesis is different so we will understand uh, firstly the type 1 okay so the type 1 is a type of immune mediated injury okay it is a immune complex mediated injury which will further lead to uh, many uh, things so firstly how immune complex are formed is so in the body uh, there are two ways okay so in the body what can happen in the circulation even the antibody and antigen can react to form immune complex and this immune complex can go and deposit in the glomerular okay in the glomerulus okay where it deposits okay that is different firstly uh, the pathogenesis starts from antigen and antibody they react they combine they form anti uh, the immune complex and they get deposited in the glomerulus second way of uh, deposition of immune complex is that if this is the glomerulus so what can happen is there can be an antigen uh, which can get planted over here okay from the body one antigen comes or the an antigen is endogenous and the antigen is planted over here then antibodies are formed against this antigen and they react with this and form immune complex okay so there are two forms one is the planted form one is the circulating uh, immune complex form so in this case the antigen which uh, in the mpgn is actually unknown but uh, certain uh, proteins are seen uh, which uh, resemble that of hepatitis c or hepatitis b virus okay these proteins are uh, seen in the case of mpgn so uh, these antigens from hepatitis c or hepatitis b can either get planted first and then uh, antibodies can be formed against it or it is seen that sometimes immune complex which are circulating in the body they have these antigens and they get deposited in the glomerulus so the two methods you should remember is the circulating immune complex one and the planted uh, antigen type so both are involved in case of uh, membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis so you uh, one thing uh, is that when the immune complex okay when the immune complex are deposited in the glomerulus so what will happen is if they will induce local inflammatory response okay local inflammatory response will be there with the help of various cells okay with the help of various complements and this will lead to the injury in the case of for type 1 type of glomerulonephritis okay now going to the type 2 now type 2 is also known as dense deposit disease here there is a problem in the activation there are abnormalities in the activation of the complement system and also in that alternate 
active uh, type of uh, complement system as you are aware there are two type of complement pathways there is classical pathway there is alternative pathway but here the abnormalities are seen in the alternative pathway to understand it let's just briefly revise what is the alternative pathway and where the abnormalities will take place okay so in alternative pathway due to various bacteria and toxins the c3 gets activated and forms c3 convertase okay now this c3 convertase is a labile uh, form of enzyme okay so uh, there are certain things which are helping in the stabilization of this c3 convertase and certain things which help in degradation of this c3 convertase ultimately c3 convertase will lead to uh, conversion of c3 into c3b okay so what happens in case of uh, our uh, type 2 mpgn is there is over activation of the complement system okay the complement system is over activated for this over activation uh, one thing is seen that uh, the c3 nephritic factor okay this is type of autoantibody which is seen in case of type 2 mpgn this is increased so when this is increased it helps to stabilize the c3 convertase okay when the c3 convertase is stabilized that means it will convert more of c3 into c3b that is the over activation of the complement system okay uh, also uh, a c3 nephritic factor when it will convert a c3 into c3b the body in the body you will see there is decrease in the c3 level okay the c3 level will decrease and uh, the c3 nephritic factor it will be increased okay now uh, uh, so the type 2 dense deposit disease comes under the heading of c3 glomerulopathies okay now uh, to discuss before the morphology if we are discussing the morphology in case of mpgn we should understand uh, where uh, the deposition of the deposits take place either in case of type 1 and type 2 so uh, you can see here this part is the capillary okay this is the capillary lumen okay and this uh, the triangle small small triangles these are actually the podocytes podocytes uh, from the visceral epithelial cell so what is there there is capillary then there is visceral epithelial cell then there are parietal epithelial cells okay this is the mesangium part so where does the deposition takes place in case of mpgn is this part that is the in between the capillary and the podocyte that is the glomerular basement membrane so uh, in case of uh, type 1 mpgn we say the deposits are subendothelial means uh, this is the endothelium and here the deposits are seen these are the deposits which are seen and these deposits take place in the glomerular basement membrane so uh, in mpgn what will happen is uh, if you see the histology the histology you will see there are certain alteration in the glomerular basement membrane there is proliferation of the glomerular cells and there is leukocyte infiltration okay because there is immune complex mediated injury so leukocytes are infiltrating so uh, also the name of uh, uh, mpgn is also mesangiocapillary glomerulonephritis because apart from the proliferation uh, of the mesangium uh, capillary loops are also we see there is proliferation so this word is also used so here you can see in this uh, light microscopic picture in the he picture you can see this is the normal glomerulus okay so if you see over here the cells you can see this is the normal how the glomerulus should look like okay so here this is the involved picture in the mpgn so you can see the hypercellularity okay if you see the cells over here if you count each cell over here the cells are less however here if you count the cells are more this is hypercellularity in the glomerulus and this hypercellularity is due to proliferation of the mesangial cell due to leukocyte infiltration okay so uh, morphology uh, uh, in the light microscopy i told you that both type 1 and type 2 are similar one thing to notice the glomerular the uh, glomerular will appear very large and hypercellular and hypercellularity uh, 
uh, because of the cells proliferation okay because of the mesangial cells because of the endocapillary proliferation because of the infl uh, uh, the infiltrating leukocytes and they will have a lobular appearance of because of that okay if you see over here there is a lobular you will see that the there is proliferation and it appears like a lobule okay so it's a lobular proliferation which is seen in case of mpgn one thing more to see in case of mpgn is the changes in the glomerular basement membrane so in glomerular basement membrane what we will see is because uh, what is happening there are some deposits which are taking place in the here in the basement membrane itself so what you will see you will see like uh, appearance that it is uh, appearance as double contour appearance okay you will see duplication appearance that it, it has been split it into two okay it has been thickened so these are all the things you will see in the basement membrane also so what is appearance in the glomerular basement membrane it will be thickened and you will see that uh, it has a double contour or tram track like appearance then uh, you can also appreciate the duplication of the basement membrane because of the deposits because there are deposits taking place you can uh, it will appear as if the basement membrane has been uh, depo uh, duplicated okay it has been thickened so much because because uh, because of these deposits also the glomerular basement membrane also tries to synthesize more so because of that the the these appearance are seen uh, on the ultra structurally if you are talking about the uh, light uh, going from the light microscopy to the electron microscopy the things will dif uh, differ okay so in the type 1 uh, the deposits they are not very uh, dense and very linear okay so if you will see uh, here uh, you can see a deposit okay here you can see a deposit here you can see a deposit but in case of type 2 dense deposit disease there is a thickened it is regularly seen the deposit uh, along with they are very regular okay so this is the difference between the deposit they are very electron dense and they are very uh, ribbon like so in uh, in type 1 mpgn you have discrete subendothelial deposits and uh, these deposits they are uh, not a linear present they are discretely present and uh, in case of type 2 mpgn what is there there is uh, the glomerular basement membrane has a ribbon like extremely electron dense material is deposited now if we see the composition of the material okay when we do immunofluorescence we see the composition of the material so what material is deposited actually in case of type 2 if you talk about type 2 you don't know the material uh, uh, composition we don't know the material composition so this material is unknown we don't know what is depositing in case of uh, your uh, type 2 however if we talk about type uh, 1 in the immunofluorescence we see two deposits the c3 and igg okay so igg and c3 both are seen in case of uh, your uh, type 1 mpgn however in case of type 2 the exa exact composition is not known and the deposits they are in the granular form because they are deposited discreetly now so this is uh, the appearance is granular of the immunofluorescence going to the clinical features how the patient patient will present so patient mostly presents with the nephrotic syndrome however some patients can present with nephritic component also and some patient have a nephrotic nephritic picture it uh, just overlaps okay and disease uh, can go from mpgn to rpgn that is the re uh, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis we already discussed it uh, so you can see that video also so it can go into rpg and it has a bad prognosis some uh, around 50 percent patient go into chronic renal failure and also there is high reoccurrence if you go for transplant also particularly in dense deposit disease there's high incidence of reoccurrence uh, lastly we'll discuss about secondary mpg and that is because uh, there was uh, as you remember we divided into primary and secondary in primary the cause is not known however in secondary type the cause is known so uh, secondary mpgn mostly leads to type 1 type of uh, mpgn 
and the diseases which can lead to secondary MPGN are SLE, you have hepatitis B infection, hepatitis C infection, then you have anti alpha trip, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency which can also lead to emphysema, then you have certain malignancies can, which can lead to secondary MPGN and certain hereditary deficiencies in the complement regulatory proteins. So this was all about the MPGN. Okay, if you have any query, you can ask in the comment box. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Thank you.